This is the biggest exception you have. You circle the first one. Because now you're going to say to me, Manu, I have a client. Like, I have clients. How many of you have clients that have US bank accounts? That you must have clients. How many of you have Canadian companies that have, let's say, a branch in the US or that for whatever reason have to have a bank account in New York or have a bank account in California? How many of you have clients like that? I have clients like that. So are you saying to me that I have to include that bank account that's sitting in the US in there? No, you don't, because there's an exception. Because if the foreign property is used or held exclusively in carrying on an active business, it's out. So that's a common way you try to get out of it. So I have clients that have branches in the US, and we don't put those, they have, let's say, 10 bank accounts in the US. Or I have certain clients that have no offices in the US, but they have certain customers that say, we're not depositing US funds unless you have a US bank account, right? Pro US, that's out. A share of the capital stock or indebtedness of a foreign affiliate, that's out. So let's say what a foreign affiliate is, which is an 11, that's on the 1134s. So if you have directly 1% interest, or, and you and a related parties have 10% of a company, you don't put the 1135. You do 1134. And I have a file exactly like this, I have two like this, where they were doing 11, the accounts were doing 1135s, they no joke, I'm not, no, this is not self-promotion or anything. They attended my webinar on 1134s. They realized they made a mistake, and now I'm going to do voluntary disclosures for 10 years. Because I told them it doesn't matter because you can't go to CRA and say, oops, you know what, one account was cute, she goes, she's a cute, she's a really nice lady, she goes, can I go to CRA and just go on 1135 and cross out the five and put a four? It's 1134. I go, no, you can't because it's a different form. And I go, no, it's not that easy. And I say there's more disclosure requirements, yes. No, but I can if you want. Can you, can you go more than 10 years? You can't no. go more than 10 years. So what happens in this situation that you know it's more than 10 years? Okay. Can anyone hear what she's saying or you want me to repeat the question? Repeat the question? Okay, so what she's saying is, first of all, do you go over voluntary disclosures? I say no, but I can talk about anything. By the way, if you want anything to talk about tax, I'll talk about it. You don't have to put it. It doesn't have to be on the slides. I'm just kidding. But what happens is she's saying that you can only do voluntary disclosure for 10 years. They're only under, under the fairness rules, you can only, they, CRA can only go back, according to the law, and assess and waive 10 years of penalties. Yes, that's correct. Then your comment was, uh, sorry, what's your name, ma'am? Rita. 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 Pardon me, Rita? Rita, R-I-T-A. Uh, Rita, yeah, like my wife. Okay, perfect, so I'll remember your name. That's my wife's name. So what happens is, one of, the components of a, one of the conditions of a voluntary disclosure is you must have a complete disclosure. So let's say this issue with 1134 has been going on since 1996. What do you do? What you have to do is, in practice, now this is not guaranteed, so don't hold me to this. What you have to do is make the disclosure form saying, this is what's been happening, here's the situation. We should have been filing since 1996. You disclose that. You disclose the fact whether you had FAPI or not FAPI, you disclose it in, a pay, in, a, in your letter. But the actual forms, you go back 10 years. So what happens is CRA will accept the written disclosure as being complete, because you have to be complete, otherwise the voluntary disclosure is invalid but they will only go back and assess 10 years. Now, can they go back further? Yes, they can. The example, which is the most common example where they can go back former is any of you guys, of course, you guys don't have clients like this, but let's say friends of yours who are accountants have clients who had hidden Swiss bank accounts, Liechtenstein accounts, all those things. Not you guys, you guys are good people. Let's say friends of yours, right, had these accounts. Those guys, they're going back forever. And they don't care, they're assessing penalties. They're going back to the 1970s, I know that. So that's the common example, but in practice, they don't. And for something like this, where specifically there's a disclosure requirement, and there was no taxes owing, then in my experience, they will accept it. But you be, it's a good point though. If you go back more than 10 years and file, they will assess you. I've seen accountants do that, and they've assessed penalties, and the accountant calls me afterwards and says, hey Manu, can you help me? And I'm like, what can I help you with? And they're saying, oh, you're a magician, you're a tax magician. Can you do a do-over? I go, no, I can't do a do-over, you already filed it. So that's an important thing you gotta realize. Are we good? That was a good question. Rita, yeah. 